by with money we don't know pockets empty but us are full anyway hey playing like children and love like car and jay you were too good for me but i wanted you anyway i always loved you over my head even when you Legend, what is up? Hope we're good. I hope you had an absolutely incredible day, buddy. And welcome back to a brand new YouTube video. So today's video, I'm bringing you through a full, typical day in the life here in Tulum. So I'm just like we're getting some sunlight because sunlight is so, so important just for health, just for feeling good. So got some sunlight in the eyes. So my typical morning routine is like I wake 6.30 every single morning. Even when I'm back home in Ireland, that's kind of like my typical time to get up. It's like half six. So get my water. So what I had this morning in my glass of water, I had some coconut water and I had some lime juice in there, which was really, really tasty. So get my vitamins, get my electrolytes and it just tastes really, really good. 10 minutes of journaling and then I did about 15, 20 minutes of reading as well. So that's my typical morning. So I'm now getting some steps in, getting some movement in, get the blood flowing and I'm going to get straight into some work. Then I have about an hour and a half of work to get done and then we're going to have some food and then we're going to hit the gym for an upper body session. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoyed the video, buddy. Make sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new here as well, and enjoy it, buddy. I've been up for three nights. My eyes are bloodshot red. Damn, I want to see the sunshine. It's getting to my head. One look in the mirror, don't like what I find. I know that somewhere in there, there's a good guy. I'm sorry that I stole your car Ain't got those tattoos on my arms that don't Boom, so we're heading to the gym now Coming out into this heat, coming out into this sun is just It's incredible man, so blessed to be here And this is where I park my bike my bike's there, Greg's bike is up a little bit further. The problem is though, my bike actually doesn't have a lock. I used to have a lock that I brought with me, but I broke the lock, so I don't have one right now. So it might be a little bit dodgy, so when I'm going places, I have to kind of be strategic in, in terms of where I'm going so that I can actually put the bike somewhere where it won't get stolen, because apparently these things can get stolen very, very easily, because it's worth like 60, 70 quid, 60, 70 euro. So that's, that's a lot of money over here for people that need it so um yeah if we ever go somewhere like me and greg go somewhere i would just use his bike lock which he has right here but uh, that's something i need to pick up is a new bike lock for this bad boy so the gym for me is about seven eight minute cycle from where i am right now in alazama so alazama is like this kind of more developed part of tulum so it's kind of do really enjoy these cycles because it's just so sunny you feel the sun on your skin and also as well something from being here like i've been here about four weeks and like the sun just being in this climate has really massively improved my skin because sunlight is so, so important for your health. Sunlight is so important for many aspects in just terms of your mood, your energy, everything. So being surrounded by the sun and just having the sun every single day is, has been massively beneficial for my skin. Like I used to have a lot of spots and like acne and it was just from me neglecting my health and having the sun, eating better, drinking better. It's just been so beneficial and my skin has cleared up massively. So this is like the typical time I would usually go to the gym is like 9, 10, because I always like to train early, because I feel that once, once I get it done in the day, I'm just set up for the day and I can attack my work and attack whatever I have to do. Like I'm like everyone else, I'm a normal guy. Like I actually would get a little bit unmotivated in the evening and I'd feel it would be a lot tougher for me to train in the evening. So that's why I like to train in the mornings, 9, 10 o'clock. And I have that freedom to kind of, you know, move my days around and I can train in the morning. But even if I was to, if I was starting work, at 9, 9 a.m. I would train in the morning because I just feel so much better. And so that is like the typical morning for me is, you know, waking half six, 7 a.m. I'm up, out of bed, getting my morning routine done, which is so, so important for me. And I feel if I don't get my morning routine done, my day just goes to absolute chaos. Um, well, not chaos, it just doesn't run as smoothly. I don't have as much energy, I don't feel as good. So this is kind of like my anchor for the day or the foundation, just laying out the foundations for the day ahead. So my journaling, my walk, getting my reading in as well. I just find it really sets me up for the morning ahead and making sure I get my hydration in. Getting the fluids in because obviously overnight you're gonna be dehydrated and especially the heat over here, definitely need a lot of fluids. So um, that's why I kind of set my morning up just like that. And then attack some work, get my main tasks done, which is in terms of like content for like social media, client work, client messages, all that kind of stuff. I got interrupted there because there was a, a lorry that was coming. 
they're working on a lot of sites over here. Going past me here. Boom! Hope you're good, bro. <laughs> you seen me filming, and he just uh, let me. He gave me the right away and let me drive past. But uh, there's a lot of construction and stuff goes on here. Like this is a very developing town, as you can see. There's just houses being built, broken down cars, and uh, it's yeah, a pretty cool place. Something completely different here compared to Ireland is that traffic are so obliging. So even though I'm on a bike or if you're walking, like the cars will stop for you, buses will stop for you, and just it's really, really incredible. As well as just army guys being everywhere with guns, that's something that's different to Ireland as well. The traffic obliging, letting you pass no matter, even when they have right of way, and then you just see army guys with guns just everywhere. I'm not even joking, they drive around in Jeeps. There'd be five or six of them in the back of the Jeep with guns. They'd be, you walk past them on the street and it's just, it's just normal here. Like if you're to see three or four guys, big dudes, dressed in army, army outfits, carrying fucking big guns like, you'd be just, if, if you see that in Ireland, you'd be like, what the heck is going on? But it's just so normal here, like you see it like four or five times a day. So I'm just on the main street right now and the gym is about one minute away and there's gonna be a lot of traffic. So I will see you guys in the gym. My bike lock has been gone for the last few days and I've been using the gym's, uh, I think chain is actually maybe for locking the door. But I came to the gym and I was like, oh, do you have anything that I could use to lock my bike or can I keep my bike inside? And they said, oh, we'll give you this big chain. So, I mean, it does the job. They were laughing at me when I, when I took it off them. But I mean, it keeps my bike secure. Just rocked up to the gym and then we see this handsome dude. How you going, bro? What's going on, bud? So today's session is going to be an upper body session. And we're always starting off in the upstairs of the gym. So it's like a three-story gym, which is really, really cool. So you can see the view of the town, pretty cool all around. And there is, a, there is some machines over here. My man Ryan is coming up the stairs again, absolute beast. But today we have a bit upper body session going down. So I always set off with some stretching, always set off with a warm up, even though it's so warm over here. Gotta still warm up the joints, warm up the muscles to make sure that I actually have a productive session and don't cause any injuries. And also as well at the side of my sessions, I'll do some jumps, do some plyos. Also, I'm not sure if you know who Ryan is, the guy I just met outside the gym, but he's actually a good friend of Greg's and he's been living over here in Tulum and he's someone I meet up with regularly. Uh, he's a health coach, really, really knowledgeable guy, a really, really smart guy. And it's great to be surrounded by people like him because he's just so awake to what's going on, so health conscious, really active and he's all about health and fitness and all about just being a better version of himself. It's great surrounding myself with those people because it brings me up a level, it brings me up, it makes me better and just hanging around people with those standards also drives my own standards. Something that's really important as well is having a mobility and warm-up routine for all of your workouts. So you can train hard, lift heavy, but if you're not working on your mobility, not working on improving the flexibility within your joints, within all your muscles, then it's going to come to a stage where you're going to have injuries, you're going to be feeling really tight, your body's going to be aching, and that's because you're not giving yourself time for mobility. And like mobility doesn't mean you have to, you know, do stretching, do mobility work for 30 minutes to an hour every single day. I do five, 10 minutes before every single session. I'm doing five, maybe six mobility sessions a week for 10 minutes. That's 50 to 60 minutes a week, which is absolutely solid. And um, it's going to massively benefit your workouts, massively benefit how you feel, be more flexible, more agile, and it's so important. So make sure that you do add in at least five to 10 minutes of mobility before all of your workouts. And let's do it full body. Like just because you're doing upper body doesn't mean you can't do lower body mobility. Like I always do full body mobility before lower body sessions, before upper body sessions, no matter what I'm doing. If I'm doing running sessions, I'm always doing my, mo my mobility beforehand. So it's really important that you do do that. Today's upper body session, starting off with some chest flies, 
So my first main movement is going to be a dumbbell press. So I want to just do some flies, get some blood into the muscle and just pre-exhaust it. It's because something as well with chest, with pressing, I can't go as heavy as I used to be able to before. So doing things like pre-exhausting is really, really helpful to, to maximize what I get from the presses. Two and a half months ago, I did damage to my AC ligament in my right shoulder. So that's kind of prevented me from lifting heavy dumbbells. So something to kind of counteract that, things I can't if it's heavy on the dumbbells, I'll pre-exhaust with some flies beforehand so they can fully maximize my chest because I've lost a lot of size. So doing things like these are going to help me just maximize uh, my train, training my chest. So that is our first exercise completed. So we did our chest flies and we did our dumbbell press. So with those dumbbells, I couldn't go super heavy. So the main focus was just really focusing on the muscle that I was working. So doing the flies obviously prevented how strong my chest could be during the movement. Seeing as it was pre-exhausted. Yeah, because if I went any heavier with the dumbbells, if I, if I progress too quickly, I'll feel my shoulder will start to pop up again because I'm still doing some recovery work for the shoulder. I have lost a lot of size in my chest, so that's why I do want to keep training it up. So doing smart things like this, doing some uh, flies, first to pre-exhaust before the presses. So on chest supported row last week I did 47.5 kg for 8 reps and on that set I was going for 5 to 8 reps. So seeing as I hit the maximum rep range, I'm going to now implement progressive overload. So this means I'm going to add a little bit of extra weight and I'm going to go for the 5 to 8 reps again. So today, instead of 47.5 kilos, I'm going to jump up and do 50 kilos and I'm going to aim for 5 to 8 reps on this. And if I can hit 5, 6, 7, 8, then that's a massive progression from last week. And so a really big thing that's going to help you build a lot more muscle is using progressive overload in your sessions. So instead of coming in and doing the same weight for the same reps every single week, you want to come in, do the certain weight, hit a certain amount of reps and then the next week go for either more reps, more weight or else just do a slower, slower range of motion which is going to be so beneficial to build more muscle, tear more muscle fibers and to get stronger and that's how we build muscle. As you know, I have no bike lock for my bike, so I was asking the security guard, oh, do you mind if I just put the bike inside the door and you can watch it? And he was like, oh yeah, no bother. And then I think like some groundsman guy or someone that kind of does the work outside, he came in, he was like, no, no, no bike, no bike, you've got to put it outside. And I was like, look man, I've got no, I got no um, bike, bike lock, bike chain. And I was like, I can't put it, I don't think he understood me. So then he said, oh look, I, I watch for 20 minutes. So I was like, grand, so finally, nobody's gonna rob the bike. Hopefully he's, he's a legit guy and he's looking after my bike. But uh, yeah, so we're in the shopping centre now, heading to get some grub. I have a nice long list uh, because I'm adding a lot of new foods into my diet. Things like superfoods and new healthy organic foods into my diet just to improve my health, improve my energy, improve my skin. 
and uh, yeah so that's what i'm looking for now I've boom shopping done and we're back home and it's all laid out there so i'll just show you what i got but remember i told you that i left my bike with a guy kind of like the the janitor or the ground groundsman or just the guy outside that looks after all of the parking space i suppose i'm not sure what, exactly what he does but that's what he seemed as he was dressed up in that kind of uniform that he was the guy that was outside but remember i, I said i left my bike with him I went outside, like I told him I'd be 20 minutes. He was like, okay, 20 minutes. And I think I went out like 25, 30 minutes later because I was looking around the shop for all the stuff I wanted to buy. I ended up like missing out on five or six things that I wanted, but uh, that doesn't really matter because I was in a bit of a rush. But I went out looking for the bike and he wasn't there. I couldn't find him anywhere. I was like, oh man, where is the bike? And I was carrying my backpack, which was full of groceries. I had a bag in my hand full of groceries. And I was like, where is this dolly gone? Because it was at least a 30, 35 minute walk home. So I was walking on this car park, couldn't find him anywhere. So then I was like, he, sh he, he might've put a bike with the bike stands, you know, with all the other bikes, but like they it could easily get nicked there. So like I went over, looked in one bike section, there's no, my bike wasn't there. I was like, shit. Went to another one, bike wasn't there. I was like, oh man. It actually turns out that it was up against just a random pole at like the middle of the car park. So like it was, it was in a random place. So like anybody could have just picked it up and taken it, but luckily they didn't. So yes, I did get my bike back. I trusted in him and it's somewhat worked out. So at least I have my bike and I, but I'll have to pick up a bike lock somewhere. So um, that's something I'll have to get over the next couple of days because I won't be able to go anywhere unless I have a bike lock because apparently Greg actually went to a shop, I think a couple of days ago and he left his bike outside the door. He didn't lock it or anything. And the person in the shop was like, no, 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 you have to lock your bike because if you don't lock up your bike, someone's going to nick it straight away because people will just walk by, they'll see the bike, they'll jump on and they'll just <laughs> take it away. So that's something I need to sort out. But let me just show you what shopping I picked up. So I told you I didn't get everything that I wanted, which was kind of annoying, but I still have a lot of stuff here to keep me, keep me going, which is brilliant. So number one, got some bananas, got some coconut water. I absolutely love this. This is really, really tasty. Got some yogurt, got some sweet potatoes, some chicken, eggs. In this one, we got a bunch of limes. So this is just for adding to the water. Have some apples, just some tomatoes here, and some kiwis, because these are high in magnesium, so it's really good to have these. I have some asparagus, high in antioxidants. Add them in with my chicken. And then here I have some black beans. I have some oats. I have some cacao powder, which I've actually opened and used already. And some coconut flakes, which I've also used. And I have some quina as well and this is everything that I've gotten. So this should keep me going for about at least three or four days anyway. Um, I might pick up another couple of things along the way, but uh, this is everything that I've got. Something that I haven't actually shown you yet is the actual apartment. So Greg's actually gone to the gym, that's why I'm home alone right now. So I was getting some work done. But what I'll do right now is I will show you exactly how the apartment looks, because it is pretty cool. Like it's a two bed obviously for the two of us. There's a balcony and there's also a little bit of a secret upstairs kind of um, outdoor place as well, so I'll show you. So this is the outside. This is when you come in the door. It's a pretty cool door as well. But the difference in heat, like it's super warm out there. And we have the aircon in, on here and it's just, you can feel the rush of coolness. But yes, this is when you walk in. This is like the main room, seating area. Kitchen is then to the left. So you come here on the right is Greg's room. That's the main area, it's the kitchen table. Well, it's not a kitchen table, it's like the workspace. That's my workspace, that's Greg's workspace. <laughs> then there's a bit of a seating area here. And um, we can watch some TV if we want. TV is just massive. And then from this area, so again, the workspace, kitchen. So there's a bit of like a island here. It's just really just for holding stuff. I'll put all that in the fridge when I'm finished. This is the fridge and this is our cooking spot. To be honest, we spend a lot of time here because we love to cook our own food. We love having just our own meals. Like we really go for takeaways. Like the fridge is full, cupboards are full of food, and we just love to cook our own meals because we know exactly what we're eating and we can eat better quality. Out here, we have a bit of a balcony. It's super warm out here. Like I only come out here in the mornings just to do some journaling and do some reading. It's just super warm out there. You can just feel the difference because we have the aircon on up there, which is really, really handy. And we'll go into Greg's room. I'm not sure if there's anything that I shouldn't be showing you. It's his gaff. He has kind of the he kind of has the main main kind of bedroom. There's a shower inside there. A nice mirror. Then he has his own balcony himself, which is pretty cool. So he can chill out here whenever he wants. Nice old view. Trees everywhere. Beautiful. And next we go to my room. 
So I've actually got two beds in my room, so like a, two singular or smaller beds. I sleep closer to the window because the aircon is here and it actually makes, it doesn't make too much noise, but it's quieter to sleep here than it is here. And at night time there isn't much noise outside, so it's actually ideal. That's why I chose this one, further away from the noise. Nice little setup. Got myself a TV as well. I mean, it's grand. The only thing I do in here is just sleep and just maybe chill out for a little bit. I have all my clothes. These are actually clean clothes. And got all my other clothes that I barely even use. Don't even use any of these. We got the bathroom. Pretty cool. Toilet, shower, does the job. Boom. Then inside in this door, First, I thought this was like a laundry place. So I was like, oh, maybe there's a washing machine in here. Maybe there's do all the laundry kind of stuff. So then I opened the door and there was a staircase. And I was like, what? So I went up the staircase. I was like, where is this going? Is this like another world? Is this just another planet that we're going to? And we get to the door and boom. Just this massive outdoor space. And I was just completely shocked. I was like, what, is this part of our apartment? Because I thought it was just the apartment below, which is really, really cool. And there's a jacuzzi here as well. I don't even use this. Like I go in here some, some days, but I'd rather go to the pool. And there's a beautiful view. I usually come up here and I'll stand here in the mornings because the sun is like, just comes up here. And this is the only like place that I can come that I can capture the sun in the morning. And it's, I go for a walk, but I come here, get sun, didn't go straight into my morning routine. But I mean, this place is cool, dry clothes there, attached roof, cool stuff. I just come up here, chill out in the sun, make some content here as well. But there's a beautiful view here as well. So if you're kind of curious on what the prices are to rent in Tulum, like this is a two bedroom apartment and it's in a pretty good spot. It's in Al which is kind of a more, we'll say developed part of Tulum. For both of us, we, we rented this for a month and this cost, this cost me like just over 750 for the month. So both of us together, it was about 1500. Uh, so it is pretty pricey, but uh, you can definitely find cheaper places. Like the place I was at for the first two and a half weeks was a one bedroom. It was an Airbnb as well. And I think it came to like 600 for the month. If you want to like pay for the whole month. So like my two and a half weeks, I'm not sure, was it like three, three or 400 or something for two and a half weeks um, because it was a shorter period. But if you want to stay for a month, I think it comes like six, 650. So it's not too bad. I mean, like to stay in Tulum, uh, it's pretty cool. But right now I need to get back to work and I got to put that chopping in the fridge because cold stuff will go pretty warm, pretty fast. So put it back and it's back to work. I got a ton of content to get through and I got a ton of uh, client work to get through as well. So that's going to be the crack for the next maybe two or three hours. And at six o'clock this evening, we're going to hit the football pitch and we got some five aside. So I think me and Ryan are going there and I'm not sure if Greg's coming because he's fasting at the moment. So the shopping's just after being put away and I'm sitting down now to get my work done. So I have about two or three hours of work to get done here. So right now we have a bowl, which is full of about 200 grams of yogurt. We have a full banana, I have some honey, I have some cacao powder, and then I have some coconut flakes on top, which is absolutely beautiful. And then in this drink, then I have a glass of coconut water, and I have a lime squeezed into this as well. So this is just pure goodness right here. Monsters at your window. No, you can't sleep, you pretend though. You don't have to play the hero. Cause I got you. Legend, just about to cook up some grub before we head off to some football and this guy walks in the door with two hum humongous, what do we call these? Papaya. Papaya. They're actually pretty tasty. He, he, he gave me these on the first day and they're actually pretty nice.
Legend, we're at the soccer pitch and it looks pretty busy at the moment, like all pitches, even a small Astro, the big pitch here are all kind of taken up by teams, either doing some form of training or something's on. So I don't think we'll be playing any five aside just yet, but hopefully these teams will finish training soon and there'll be some opportunity on some pitch to get some teams together and play some five aside. I'm here on my own at the moment, Ryan pulled out, I think he has a little bit of an injury or something, he's just, he's just recovering from something, so it's best off that he leaves it off for today. So that's. The plan I'm here on my own. I was meant to come with Ryan. Greg was fasting all day and he just had some food about half an hour ago so it wasn't ideal for him to come down. So hopefully we can get the band together and play some football because it's still a beautiful evening man. The sun is shining so really looking forward to this. I'm going to do some kicking around myself just to get moving and yeah we'll take it from there. Boom! Currently playing with these boys here. We have a side, uh, five a side going. Some young lads, some older lads of my age as well and we're currently up 3-1. Two goals courtesy of myself so that's pretty good. Here we go. Boom, what a beautiful sunset as well. Man, this is insane. I'm currently in goal because I want to give everyone a chance. And I've been counting days to get away to see you again, see you again. Been fighting ways to get away to see you again, see you again. And we are done. What a beautiful evening to end on. It is about 8 o'clock right now. That's about two hours of football. Sweating like mad. Got some sun in as well, so that's beautiful. This is amazing. Boom, back after a beautiful football session. And we have some decent grub cooked up. So we have about 150 grams of chicken, 
some asparagus, both cooked in coconut oil, sprinkled with a little bit of pink salt, and then we have the beautiful bowl of goodness. Again, about 150 grams of yogurt, mixed with cacao and a little bit of honey. And then we have two kiwis, and then we have some coconut flakes on top. So this is gonna be absolutely beautiful. So I'm about halfway through my chicken and my asparagus, and this is very, very tasty. Adding a little bit of pink salt makes such a difference to any savory meal, to be honest, and this is just beautiful. I'm like eating my chicken, eating the asparagus, and I'm, and I'm like looking at the bowl of stuff of my yogurt here, and I'm just like, should I eat the chicken and, and asparagus faster so that I can eat the yogurt? But I gotta just let myself digest the food, but don't eat too quickly. Well, I'm gonna get on with my food, I'm gonna put on a YouTube video as well. Andrew, Andrew Tate has a new podcast out with Andrew Bet Johnson, so it's four and a half hours, so I'm gonna start watching the first half hour. I'm gonna head for a shower, and then I'm heading to bed, so. That's a typical day in Tulum. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what part you enjoyed most and stay tuned for future videos and I'll see you in the next one.